Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you, 4th of July, Independence Day uh, in America. Should be a quiet afternoon in the markets. Uh, probably also a quiet morning, uh, to be fair. The back end of this week is where all the fun happens. We got all the services data out of Europe. We got ISM. We got unemployment data out of the U.S. We got jobless. We also have the minutes tomorrow from the FOMC. Um, in general, I gotta say the risk here is is for a weaker dollar um, the rest of the week. I mean. I know that uh, unemployment has beat for like the last, I don't know, 50, 50 months or whatever it seems, it always beats. But when we get into these kind of moments uh, in the global economy where we're waiting for tightening to bite, um, and we're waiting for tightening to take its effect, it's sort of binary, right? So, you know, you naturally have to lean left on these unemployment numbers um, over the next, I don't know, eight months. So, the, you know, the question for me personally, in my opinion, is just when is this tightening going to, um, you know, create a stranglehold on the economy? When, when is the noose going to tighten? Um, on the American economy, and it could happen any time. Could could happen in in July 2023. Could also happen in February 2024. But you just have to be cautious with this. For me, there are a lot of signs um, that trouble is coming, and it's going to be a different kind of trouble, a different kind of um, different kind of set of problems than we've seen maybe since the 70s, right? This isn't going to be the great financial crisis. The banks are fine. I'm not even sure this is going to be corporate real estate. Um, I have a feeling this is going to be maybe on the leveraged loan side of the equation. There are huge, huge firms out there. They're sort of what you call shadow banking firms, quasi-hedge funds that have these huge portfolios of of loans, which are consumer loans, corporate loans, uh, credit facilities that uh, are going to have to pay a price here. There's going to have to be some of these guys who took loans at six who now are going to have to be asked to renew them at 16. This, uh, and then what do you do? You just fold, you just fold the deck and, and you know, say no, uh, and then go into bankruptcy and then the dominoes start to fall so we're waiting and looking for this um, and how are we expressing it mainly we're trying to be short dollars um, gold's been pretty good to us the last few days we actually teased out of this thing 27 28 29 yesterday um, we will look to buy some cheapies today with the idea that there's probably going to be consolidation between 10 and 33. We will go into Friday long gold. Um, but right now we're square. So, uh, you know, we're, it's been good to us. We bought down at the figure, uh, sort of played around with it on Friday, played around with it yesterday. We got given at 12 and at 11 yesterday. We sold 20. 26 and 29 so it was a good trade now we're now we're square but maybe looking to buy cheapies here um, in gold euro same thing we're looking to buy low ones here um, we have the services PMI out I believe tomorrow or Thursday in Europe that could be problematic um, normally services PMI is is a bulwark, uh, is, is always strong here in Europe, or recently it's always been strong. If that comes in weak, um, we could get a little smack down. And are we due for a little move below 108.40? 
you're right in that no man's land, 108, 40, 107, 90. Um, this, this feels a lot like um, the gold chart where we started thinking about getting long gold below 1930. We had a few attempts at it. I would call them safe attempts, right? If you, if you think about, um, you know, at one point we bought 15s and we thought it was going to be bullish engulfing in gold. Um, but small profit. <clears throat> but then finally gold did turn. Um, and we got 30 bucks out of it to start. But hopefully there's some more to harvest. Um, Euro looks the same to me. Like we think Euro is going to 130. Uh, do we take a visit to 107.85? Sure we can. Um, so we're open-minded. The book is square right now. Ideally, we're quite happy just to also buy it through 110.15 and then put a big position on through 111. Um, that's more our style. But we will be keeping an eye on buying possible low ones. Let's look at Aussie. Uh, on hold today, the uh, RBA. We had a cheeky, we had some cheeky offers uh, between 95 and 05. They obviously did not get paid. Uh, this looks now a little bit negative. Obviously, these bars, um, after central banks move, are tricky. These aren't really uh, psychologically, they're not psychologically driven bars. They're more just hysterically driven bars. Um, so I would say short Aussie is okay. Hitting 44s right now is probably not the right thing. <clears throat> maybe see if we retrace back up to 65, 70, uh, or maybe just leave Aussie alone. If you didn't get, pay on, get paid on the stretch, I don't think you want to chase this uh, per se. Aussie N, we only bring this up because 98.50 is on the frontal lobe. Why? Because it's this high here um, from, I don't know when that was, 2021. Uh, we've said it a million times, all the N crosses are overcooked. Uh, the whole world's waiting for the BOJ to intervene. I don't think they're coming in at 145. Um, so I don't really know what to do with all of this shit, but you know, it's kind of one of those, you almost have to get lucky or you have to have a downside entry in way below the market and then have to, you're going to have to wear volatility on the BOJ. You all know how that goes down a hundred up 90 down a hundred up 90, uh, down 200, uh, and then down another 200, right. Or, or, you know. It's tricky. BOJ is tricky to make money off of, uh, at least historically for us it has been. But we are watching this 98.60 level. Um, we do like Aussie left, even though we like a weaker dollar, because the Chinese uh, blow up or the Chinese problems in China also look very, very likely to us. And again, this is, this is just basically debt-driven. Um, we think the world's going to go into some debt-driven spiral, um, and it's just a question of when it's going to start. But Aussie, um, left-hand side is our preferred side. Doesn't mean you can't make money on the right-hand side, um, but we're not chasing it today, so why am I even talking about it? Uh, let's look at Euro-Swiss. No inflation in, in uh, Switzerland. You saw the numbers yesterday. They came out lower than expected. Um, I can just tell you, I live here. There's no inflation here. I don't think the S&B is going to raise anymore. We think Euro Swiss is buy. We've been playing it on the long side. We, you know, we we played it yesterday after the numbers. We bought 72s, um, sold 98s, bought 75s again last night. And so now we're just sort of sitting here long. We also have room to buy lower. This is not a currency pair where you can really break trade it. It trades in a goofy, psychotic, but often very small range. Um, I don't know. I don't recommend it. I don't even know why I bother with it, but it's like, uh, you know, sort of on the frontal lobe when you live here in, in Switzerland, I guess. This is why. 
Um, what else are we doing? Let's have a look at cable, which isn't doing too, too much. We're super worried about the UK economy. Um, no real levels here per se. I guess uh, 125.90 is a bit of a pivot. You can sell high ones against, you know, sort of a death knock here on this, on this, uh, it's not even a line. What is that? I mean, I guess on the hourlies, it was a, that was something. But, um, yeah, no, nothing really to play with in Sterling today. Um, but the, the economy in the UK and the rate, um, the rate problems in the UK and the reset of the mortgage market in the UK, uh, most people don't realize this, but UK mortgages sort of reset every three years. And so unlike U.S. mortgages, which will take some time for raising rates to bite, um, U.K. Uh, mortgage market is v much more fluid, which just means when they lower rates, it's, it helps the economy much quick, more quickly, uh, much quicker. And when they raise rates, also it can create damage faster. Um, we're worried about the damage side. And so, in the same way, we kind of like Aussie Yen lower, Sterling Yen also um, looks like it's going to run into problems. Of course, the Yen side of all of this, uh, you're fighting against this carry trade right now. If you can time the unwinding of the carry trade, which is basically, I think, um, when everyone realizes the U.S. is in trouble, could be non-farms this Friday, um, you could sell dollar yen, but you can also sell euro yen. I mean, you could also sell Aussie yen and sterling yen. Um, but as of now, these charts are just sort of still in the hysteria mode. Are we going to make a new high through 184? Why wouldn't we? Um, still very strong trend here. If you look on the weeklies in sterling yen, you know, this thing can go easily to 196. That's another 1,300 points uh, just on silliness. That's dollar yen to 155. People say that's never going to happen. You know, you can never really say never in FX. I mean, actually, you can. You can, you can say, you know, like dollar czar is never going back to uh, three. Uh, neither is dollar turkey. But in these uh, yen crosses, the you know the higher it goes the harder it's going to fall is the way you've got to think about it um and i think about basically the day that you know i wouldn't say created my hedge fund but uh ltcm in 98 we were trading pa the partners and i and that unwind basically changed the trajectory of all of our careers um Anyway, I won't get into those stories. Uh, Sterling Yen, too high. Are we ready to sell it? No, we are not. Um, just having a look around. Swiss Yen, too high. Are we ready to sell it? Not yet. But, I don't know. Maybe it's time to um, buy a put spread or, actually, no. Maybe sell calls sell high ones we don't really fuck around in the options market too much but there's so many different ways to express a short um look into that uh what else we talked about dollars ours it looks like it wants she wants to go left um she did a little bit but as as you all know we never our short dollars are um went down to 67 back here at 79 you know, the risk is this just plows through 1905 on some shitty news um, out of out of SA. So this is probably a break trade only because there's a lot of shorts now. This bar here on Friday says go short. We made a lower daily low. So some of the um, longer term guys, they're just going to be great in 1906 stop. And they'll be forced buying up there. So be careful with that. 
Let's take a look at Euro Norway and Dollar CAD because OPEC this week. We like Dollar Norway lower just as a as a general theme. Um, Euro Norway, it's kind of the middle of nowhere. It's, this thing has a lot of room to correct still, uh, but we are much more comfortable selling this closer to 12 than banging on it at 67. You saw Russia cut yesterday. Oil does not look that bid. Really doesn't. We run a systematic on oil. You can see it over here. It's SOS points. Um, I won't. I won't show you the. I won't show you the code there. But our systematic is long oil or is pointing long oil. Um, so we've tried oil longs. A little bit I would say with very limited success recently shit looks offered man I mean historically I'm terrible at oil but 6680 looks very dangerous now um, looks looks very dangerous I mean imagine Russia cuts oils lower uh, be careful of that. And this is, is, you know, what is this? Is this a canary in the coal mine for the global economy? I mean, just ignore this shit between 104 and 124. That's a bunch of lower highs and lower lows and a bunch of like gap ups that could not be held. I don't know. Be careful. This also screws with, you know, your left hand side, dollar Norway or dollar CAD, but, um, careful of oil. All right, listen, 4th of July today, uh, not a, not a shit ton going on. We'll try and buy some low ones in gold. Um, we'll also just do some paperwork today, uh, and do some reading, just kind of, uh, keep it light and then get some strategies ready for the back end of this week. We'll see how price action closes today. All right. I've said a lot, but really I've said nothing today. So sorry about that. Uh, Talk to you tomorrow.